the church town, the church of God, as we gleefully prepare for upcoming Holy Week. <clears throat> I want to talk about a couple of coincidences today. Talk about a few things that are on my mind, a few things undoubtedly that are on your minds as well. And, of course, we're going to have our Bibles open because there isn't anything that we come to an understanding about that we do not come to an understanding about through the lens of Scripture by the power of God's Holy Spirit. So that is the first lesson for today is that we are who we are. We are who he says we are. And that is different than being caught up in every wave of culture and society that comes our way. It's not that we are outside looking in. Oh, we are in it and involved. But we are in the world, but not of it. We are of him indwelled by the power of his Holy Spirit, Lord, made possible by the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, we believe, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we pray for every individual who may come across this broadcast, that they hear you and are inspired to seek you. If they are believers, if they are already in you, that they are inspired to go deeper into the word. Pre please, Lord, provide us with your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we go. It is time for turning on the lights. And like I said, you may we want to talk about a little bit of things, but you know me. You know me by now. I have evolved as a Christian, which I think we all can do. My faith was that um, my faith was that of one who grows roots in shallow soil for a long time. I was one that said, "Oh, good, wonderful, fantastic! Everything is right in the world, and I'm right with God." Oops, this went wrong. Hold on, God. Let me go address this or something cultural would happen, or political, whatever, and I would be like, whoop, you obviously don't have any control. Let's go see what we can do over here. But I'll tell you what changed me, and this is 100% transparency. COVID changed me. When I realized how much out of my hands what this God of this world may do, it made me realize the truth of Scripture. That regardless, and I was preaching this before, and I've been preaching it since with a new sense of perspective. Regardless of my circumstances in this physical world, I am His. And my faith continues to grow. And you see and you hear the, and you experience these tectonic shifts in human existence on this planet, which we've undergone the past three years. And you can either run away from the cross or you can run to the cross. And so maybe you've noticed on social media, maybe you've noticed through me, I mean, there's, there's been transformation. Not without its cost. Not without its cost. Personally, it, when you make that decision to say, I am his and his alone, guess who's going to come at you 10 times harder to, make, to try to make you question your decision? Well, it's the opposer of God's will. That's who. He is the one. And so you go through all kinds of different things. There is no doubt about that. I don't even know, actually, where I may have just blown that whole beginning. Oh, okay, we are on. We are on. Good morning. There's Megan and Dee. Good morning, everybody. Rick, good morning, everybody. 
So if you haven't heard the opening, you should probably listen to the opening later. Um, I'll say that again. But our faith does not go without testing. And it's not, you know, we, we, we're always quick to say, oh, God is testing our faith. No. The opposer of God's will tests our faith in how he speaks to us through circumstance, through the operation of others who are succumbed to evil, whatever the case may be, these circum- they, they speak to us and they oppose what we hear in Scripture, what we read, what we know, what we believe. And his desire is that we will question this. Evil is real. Evil is tangible. Evil operates within the world. Evil is an intelligent force that operates in opposition to God's will. So, we can talk about all of the corrupt, gigantic banks that are failing. We can talk about the um, and, and how that's only going to get worse. Somehow that's all covered up. Somehow it's all covered up that the, the United States, the dollar will no but longer be the global currency. When all that money comes back into the United States, you could have double-digit, triple-digit inflation until we figure it all out. You talk about things that are happening nationally on a national scale and murders and mayhem and chaos and crime. You hear about the wars that are going on around the world. You hear about all of these things. On top of it, that, all of that, on top of all of that, all you normally ever hear from media streams or from social media or whatever is that everything is horrible, everything is wrong, it is bad, you are in the middle of a crisis, you are worry, 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 get worried, get anxious, get depressed, question who you are, right down to the very fundamentals of are you a man or are you a woman, I don't know, I don't know anything anymore. And that's Satan doing his work, man, detaching you from the power of God from the reality of God, from the truth of God at your very core. Who are you? I don't know. I don't know. I am whatever this group says I am. I am whatever this group over here says I am. I am, I don't know, but I'm anxious and I'm afraid. Oh, well, come over here, join our group. We hate all these other people. And then you can find your identity here in your hatred. Sound familiar? And so when I say that over the past three years, we were all confronted with that option, all of these options, younger people, older people, all the, every person is confronted. And we see the damage done particularly to the youngest generations. Why? Not enough life experience, not even enough experience in faith that those roots of their faith were in shallow soil. So we look at our younger generation and say, oh my goodness, they truly don't. They're truly lost. They don't know if they're a man or a woman or a human or a human. They have no, their, their, their identity is swept up in whatever cultural influences they may be following at the time. Oh, this sounds wonderful. I will adopt this. Oh, no, wait a minute. That sounds even better. I will adopt that. Become a member of this group. Okay, who are we supposed to like and who are we supposed to hate? It provides identity, identity that we're all seeking. And these are for lack of a better way of expressing it, prepackaged. They come with their own dress code. They come with their own language. They come with their own community. We hear that word so overused. Come on in. We'll give you all of those things. You no longer need to think about it. That's the small picture. And what we as Christians are commanded to do is share the big picture. 
outside of the little bubble of our circumstances or the influencers or the whatever, fill in the blank. We want to expand our understanding and knowledge by the power of God's Holy Spirit to see the bigger picture, the big picture. Or perhaps God only sees the, capital T, big, capital B, picture. We see a big picture of good and evil, of right and wrong, of truth and error. We see the big picture of order and chaos, of freedom and tyranny. We see the big picture of God at work in the world, <clears throat> in the lives of human beings, and of Satan, the opposer of God's will, at work in the world. And we can move back, and we can measure our responses based on what we see, yes, but also what we know to be true. And it may strike very, very close to home and make us very emotional, there is no doubt. But we have faith that history will be moved in the direction according to God's will. And we know as Christians, and this may be jubilation to some, maybe not to others. But we know that history will come to a given conclusion according to the word of God. So that's what I'm saying. It is. It's an evolution of faith. I don't know why the, I can't get the chat going on here in the other one because I, I can see the chat over here. Anyway. So there we go. There's the opening. And we look at all of the situations today. And it's easy for we, and this is my encouragement for today, don't get sucked in. And it's not that we don't get sucked in to know and to understand what's going on and to pitch in and do our civic duty, our Christian duty, whatever the case may be. It's why my caution is to not get emotionally sucked into a situation where you begin to say, it is truly hatred that motivates me. Be careful. Because regardless, even if you are fighting for right, <laughs> it should be love that motivates you. When I'm preaching the gospel to non-believers, I fully understand that Many, if not most of them, will reject what I'm saying. Many, if not most of them, will look at me, roll their eyes, make fun of me, make fun of what I'm saying, go out and just rip and blaspheme God for all they're worth. I understand fully that the truth divides when I speak of man and woman, two biological sexes. I know that the truth divides when I speak of human beings are created at the time of insemination, conception. I know that the truth divides when I say there, there is good and there is evil and you do not have a choice. You will serve one or the other. You are not an island unto yourself spiritually or morally or ethically. There is a basis for what you believe, and it will be the basis that is determined by the God of this world or the God of the universe. Fully aware of that. Doesn't mean that I don't care. It doesn't mean that I won't do what is right and practical to do 
but it does mean that I see a bigger picture and I have faith in the God of the universe. It does mean that I am educated. And, and what does that mean? It means that I understand that history repeats itself over and over and over again. Part of the process of the opposer of God's will is to limit the education of anybody so that people, especially younger people, are cut off in a vacuum beginning or thinking that history began when they became self-aware and that none of this has happened before and everything is literally going to hell and it is all a mess and it, there's nothing that can be done. It's never happened before. What do I do? I panic, I fear, I run. Education teaches us the cycles of human history, and that's fine. We can look at the socio-political cycles of human history, and when we, the big 101 picture, folks want freedom and liberty. Freedom and liberty always gives way to a ruling class, which always gives way to chaos and tyranny, which leads to revolution and freedom and liberty, and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. And you can look around and see what part of the cycle we are in right now. The great American experiment has come to its conclusion, and we are caught up in the same cycle of socio-political history that always has been. Why? Well, if you believed secular progressives, it wouldn't certainly be because humankind is evil. It wouldn't certainly be that because humankind is selfish, self-centered, and it's always seeking self-fulfillment, power of the self, and dominion over others. Oh, it wouldn't be that because, you see, According to secular progressives, we've evolved beyond that. We do not need systems of law and order. We do not need enforcement. We do not need heavy-handed societal boundaries that may keep this innate, wicked nature at bay. Oh, no. Well, you see the result of that. Human beings haven't changed. From the time that the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was eaten, from the time that Cain killed Abel, human beings have not changed. Remember God's warning to Cain? You better check your emotions because those emotions will turn into sin and you will not be able to control it. He didn't. So tell me it's changed. You can, in this small minority of people who do believe, right, or the, 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 the folks that do believe that, in, in large measure, those folks are utopian-oriented or utopian -oriented individuals who believe those things and they really wish and they really want and they really think that we can get to that point on our own, and we can't. The more nefarious aspect of that would be those who are pulling the strings, seeking chaos so that they can then cure the chaos and gain more wealth and more power. Those are the more nefarious instigators of the chaotic situations, financially, socially, politically, that we have right now. The point is, nothing's changed. The point is that there is a bigger picture. The point is we may live in the freest society based on individual liberties that are absolutely protected by our government, or we may live in a complete state of tyranny that is dominated by the most wicked ruler who ever lived, or somewhere in between those two. But who we are is not defined by any of that. That's where we live. That is our existence here on this planet. And we, who have submitted our lives to the God of the universe and who are indwelled by the power of God's Holy Spirit, see things differently. 
We have faith beyond all measure because it is given to us by the power of God's Holy Spirit, not something that we just generate. We have knowledge of the truth because we have God's word. We have power that raised Christ from the dead in a bodily resurrection, which we are getting ready to celebrate because we have what was promised to us by Jesus, the advocate, the counselor, God's Holy Spirit within us. Doesn't make any mention of circumstance. You have God's Holy Spirit within you, guess what? That guarantees that your body will no longer be physically broken. You will never experience death. What? You will never experience illness. Cancer will not touch you. You will never experience betrayal. You will never experience broken relationships. Because, no, that's never promised. You know what's promised? Is that we will be indwelled by the very power that raised Christ from the dead. And you know what else is promised? He will never leave us or forsake us in any circumstance. So don't be like some and misinterpret that as, okay, well, we just sit back and let God do it. No. As I have said before, and many times, because I am often misunderstood, we do what is practical. We do what we are called to do. We do it all with a faith that is an example to a dark world. We are bold in speaking the truth. Remember the Beatitudes that we began? We are bold in living out our virtue. We have the same capabilities as all of the rest of humanity you see on the news that is confused, that is destroying one another, that is seeking to destroy us and the Christian church and tear it down theologically, if not physically and violently. But by the grace of God, there go I, because I exercise the virtue that is given to me by the power of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. You are capable of all of that violence. You are capable of all of that extreme behavior, but you exercise it according to the will of God. There are strict boundaries around it. It doesn't say that it will never be necessary but it will be used according to God's will to create peace. Matthew 24 has often gone to, I'm sure lots of people are reading it today. Matthew 24 is New Testament prophecy regarding the destruction of the temple when the Romans finally roll over Israel and raise the temple, not raise it, raise it to the ground. But like every piece of prophecy, it is relevant to them then, right, in the immediate upcoming events, warning, warning, warning. It is also relevant through all generations, throughout the ages, until Christ returns. Other generations have read Matthew 24. I am certain, just whether we're talking about a local or regional conflict or whether, you know, talking about something like the American Civil War, that had to have seen, seemed like Matthew 24 was coming alive. When you look at the First World War, a concept that was never before even thought of in human history, can you imagine what people were equating with the First World War? And then the big one, where very nearly every nation on earth was involved in war. Chaos, death, destruction. Who were the chaos creators? Who were the peacemakers? Good questions. 
But my point is that prophecy speaks to us in all ages, and in a circular way, it gives us hope because we, through understanding the prophecy, know that God is in control, that he is teaching us of these things so that our eyes may be opened and we may see that bigger picture of which I speak. So don't read even this New Testament prophecy, which is very strong, as doom, gloom, destruction, all is lost. No, no, no. It is a prophetic discussion, a prophetic warning, a prophetic calling, if you will, to keep the faith. Even when it would appear, and even when it not only appears, but it is happening the world seems to be falling down around you. Take heed that no one deceives you, Jesus says. Hmm. Take heed that no one deceives you. Inside the church and says, oh, don't worry about a thing or whatever the case may be. Or outside of the church. These little one, this one line sentence, they, these are not throwaway. Every word of Jesus is important and powerful. And this frames what he is about to say very powerfully. Take heed that no one deceives you. The one who speaks the truth is speaking. The one who is truth, is love, is peace, is speaking. Take heed that no one deceives you. You have the very, at that time, living word of God in front of you. We have the written word of God inspired now as we read by God's Holy Spirit. Take heed that no one deceives you. I can't say that enough. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. (laughs) And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. These are all the beginning of the sorrows of humankind. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, which happens around the world on the regular. Just something about those Christians. They need to be killed. I haven't heard too much about other religions or religious sects being rounded up and slaughtered by the hundreds, if not thousands, around the world, but you hear about Christians. Hmm. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, a Christian. And then many will be offended, betray one another, and will hate one another. We're talking about what we'll do to each other when we become scared because we are being oppressed. Oh, I'm going to quick turn in John over there for being a Christian and get and then distance myself from the situation. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Look at the Christian church today. Prophecy? Uh-huh. Become law- and lawlessness, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Can I get an amen from the congregation? But listen to me. Because remember, do not be deceived by anyone. The living word of God is speaking prophecy. And when he frames this, he frames it, one, do not be deceived by anyone, for I am the truth. And then he ends it by saying this, those who endure to the end shall be saved. So what's it going to be? What's it going to be? 
everything and every theological construct and every how many angels can dance on the head of a pin question that we can argue about and, and all the things about scripture that we can dig in and look and compare and contrast and all of this, everything boils down to when Jesus turns to Mary and says, do you believe this? I am the way and the truth and the life. Do you believe this? When Jesus says, do not listen to others, have faith in the truth of the word of God, the living word, and those who do have faith to the end, regardless of all that stuff I just read, which is happening around the world today, you have faith, you will be saved. So what's it going to be? Are you going to dive into your self-centered, cowardly self and, and run and try to save yourself? Are you going to be strong and courageous? Are you going to plant your feet firmly in the word of God and live the truth, speak the truth, and have faith in the God of the universe and his will being done on earth through you, regardless of the circumstances you may face. It really does boil down. Like I said, things are happening economically. Things are happening socially. Things are happening politically. Yeah, I can sit around and I wish they weren't happening. But they are. And you can stand on the edge of the pool and dive right into that swamp. I should say, you can stand on the edge of the swamp and dive right into that muck. Or you can see the muck for what it is. And you may be walking through the swamp, but you are walking as truth and light because the very power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. Can there be joy among any of this? Of course. Can there be peace within any of this? Of course. Can there be love within any of this? Of course course. Because those definitions of peace and joy and love, those definitions of truth and kindness and justice, you know, because you've opened yourself up to them, come from God alone. And the power to love in the middle of hatred comes from God alone. The power to experience joy in your salvation in the middle of absolute distress and anxiety and depression comes from God alone. The, the, the ability to experience peace, a peace and comfort that surpasses all human understanding when people are running around screaming, yelling, anxious, depressed, invading capitals and running, doing all kinds. That peace that you carry within you amidst all of that chaos is of God. And you can walk right through the middle of that chaos demonstrating and carrying within you the very peace that surpasses all human understanding. Why aren't you going crazy like the rest of us? Because I have faith in the God of the universe. I am his son, and I will do as he commands, as he leads me to do. Not you or you or you or that. I hope that that is an encouragement for you today. I really do. 
Every once in a while, especially with the way things are going, as we say, we need this encouragement. We need to stop and we need to pray and we need to take that step back into the bosom of Jesus himself and find comfort and power and peace as we look upon the chaos and the death and the destruction. It does not mean that we do not then leave and walk among it, but we walk among it as, exa- as examples of the living God. Our Father, who art in heaven, praised, hallowed be your name, worshiped. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How's that accomplished? Through you. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, be that. Be that. Father, we pray that your power will permeate through all who call themselves your disciples. And that light will shine in this world. And many will be saved. We pray for the peace that surpasses all human understanding. We pray for the very power that raised Christ from the dead to bring us confidence, joy, as we walk through this together. We pray for the church universal that she may remain orthodox to the truth, committed to being your bride, spotless and blameless until the time of your return, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God bless you guys. Thank you. If you find any of this valuable, you know that it, you own it. You may do with it what you wish. Record it and send it, share it, do whatever you want to do. But man, As disciples of Christ, we truly are in this together. We are, as scripture teaches us, brothers and sisters. Let's act like it. God bless you guys. And as always, especially, come on now, it's Palm Sunday. We'll see you in church.